Put my brand new one. Okay. Well, welcome to the Academy of Leadership Sciences, Switzerland. Uh, the subject that we are going to deal today is leadership competency model Bernitza. So my aim is to uh, explain you this um, uh, competency uh, leadership competency model. Uh, just a few words about uh, me. I'm Fadi Chitoku, professor of leadership and uh, emotional intelligence at the Academy of Leadership Sciences, Switzerland. And uh, I'm the founder of the, the Academy of Leadership Sciences, uh, Switzerland. And I've been teaching in higher education in Switzerland for almost uh, 22 years. But uh, I do teach abroad as well in PhD program at uh, International Graduate Medical Education Calgary as well. And uh, do some research as well. And uh, so we tried actually to fill the gap by uh, uh, establishing Academy of Leadership Sciences Switzerland because uh, we know there are a lot of uh, books over there and uh, but there is not enough rigid science about the leadership and uh, our aim was actually to uh, contribute to the field of leadership based in research of leadership, neuro leadership, neuroscience and so on. So the Academy of Leadership Sciences Switzerland is situated at the World Trade Center Zurich. And uh, we have three domains actually, as you can see, we cover. We say that leadership is learnable and our mission is to make outstanding leaders. Because unfortunately we witness nowadays as well that um, we have a lot of crises, a lot of problems. Even now this um, pandemic, it shows that we have uh, a lot of non-competent leaders and uh, our aim is to help them to become uh, more competent. So we are involved very much in academics and we offer different kind of uh, uh, short courses and workshops and uh, courses of advanced studies, uh, diploma of advanced studies, master of science, master of advanced studies and PhD in collaboration with uh, some other institutes and uh, universities uh, worldwide. The other domain, it is research. Uh, we do a lot of research and it's not enough. So we want to do even more. So all our graduate students, they uh, do, res do research, they uh, publish, we help them to publish. But we are about over 55, uh, now actually even more, you know, over 60. Um, uh, professors and uh, scientists that collaborate together worldwide and uh, ourselves we do together and uh, in groups and so on uh, conduct a lot of research because uh, we want to serve as much as possible the field of leadership really evidence-based because now due to the development of the technology of um, um, computer technology, we can see very good, you know, how the brain function. And so we can use those outcomes from the uh, neuroscience to simplify that and uh, to put into the neuro leadership and to corporates and uh, politics and uh, education and so on. We do a lot of advising, coaching and consulting as well, individuals, but um, with um, companies or institutes uh, as well in different kind of uh, domains. So those are the domains that we cover, leadership in business um, administration, included specialization, leadership in higher education, again here, um, included specialization, leadership in politics. And uh, I'm honored here, I could see that um, Amit Arvish, it's a colleague of mine from uh, Sweden, so we offer together with him and some other colleagues as well, uh, coaching, consulting, and advising in politics as well, short courses and so on. So you are more than welcome to join us. We can um, advise you individually, but we can advise you, of course, uh, your uh, groups, political parties, and, and so on. Uh, leadership in healthcare, it is another domain as well, and uh, leadership in law. So we have established together with um, RAC, it is um, uh, one university 
and this, uh, they are specialized in uh, dental, medical uh, dentistry actually, near Dubai in Ras al Hama, we uh, have established over there uh, Center of Excellence and uh, in Zurich as well, Center of Excellence for Leadership, Innovation and Quality. And uh, we do a lot of uh, workshops, as you can see before uh, coronavirus, you know, epidemic, we, uh, were used, we got used to go all over the world actually and uh, conduct different kind of courses, different kind of uh, uh, workshops. And uh, our aim is, as I mentioned before, to help people become more competent uh, in leadership because the world needs competent leaders. And the biggest problem, you know, it is actually non-competent leadership. Non-competent leadership, we say from the, from the uh, leadership uh, science are more actually dangerous than this uh, virus for the human being. So non-competent leaders nowadays, as we are talking, are the biggest disaster for the human being. That's why we need to teach them, we need to consult them, we need to help them. Because in the most of the cases, people got hired due to, to their own um, uh, technical competencies, but nobody uh, told them how to lead. This is a skill as well. So we need to teach people who have leadership positions to teach them uh, how to lead, you know, to teach them um, to get to know their brain, to get to know themselves, to get to know emotional intelligence and many, many other skills, of course. So there are some, um, as you can see, you know, so we are uh, worldwide actually active. This is our uh, contact. Uh, if you wish to contact us, as you could see, we have um, from academics, different kind of um, programs over there, but for advising, coaching, consulting, and collaboration as well regarding research and, and so on, you can feel free to contact us and uh, we will help you, of course. This is our aim, actually. So leaders need leadership competencies, I just said before. And that's why our research, actually, it is pretty much uh, based on leadership competencies. We have made this uh, foundation, we can say, uh, in uh, 19, um, it was actually during my um, PhD, I have investigated that time uh, leadership competencies. It was a very big study. As you can see, there have been incorporated six different kinds of countries, such as Switzerland, Germany, Austria, uh, USA, Canada, and UK. And it came a very big study, actually, um, which uh, showed uh, 63 competencies, which are, um, as you can see, in uh, between those five domains. The, the very first uh, at the top, as you can see, it came. Um, oh, I got this in other name, doesn't matter. It is social responsibility. In the second one, it is uh, innovation. The third one is um, self management. Fourth, it is the uh, task management and uh, justice orientation. I have just uh, taught in Albanian, so it looks this slide it uh, remains here. So sorry about that, but it doesn't matter. You can see this, you know, it's, it is published in British Medical Journal and you can download it for free actually, the whole study. As you can see, we have, um, we have um, um, published this, uh, those outcomes in the British Medical Journal, but it is one dream for each, uh, actually for each uh, professional person in, in, in healthcare and, and medicine. And uh, we can say that actually this study has uh, set the, uh, let's say, the, the roots of the science of leadership in, uh, in healthcare and, and medicine. So um, uh, our model of leadership competencies has been replicated in different kind of countries. I'm bringing just some settings from continents as well, big studies such as this from Professor Mano, who has done a great, uh, a great study uh, investigating South uh, America, um, almost all countries over there. 
and uh, he came with a great model of leadership competencies which has similarities to, to ours but there were some differences of course because he has investigated latin countries and uh, i have investigated that time the western culture countries we've got um, the same model has been replicated actually and uh, in, in asian setting as well as you can see and uh, 2019 they have published so they took our model actually and uh, tried to uh, see how it how it is uh, uh, in asian setting but now we come to this model the uh, newest one 2020 that we have developed and it is called leadership competency model Granica. and uh, we wanted actually to see uh, how those outcomes which uh, i showed to the previous uh, uh, model can be incorporated actually to all domains in leadership so that was the, the aim actually uh, to do this uh, new study and um, we have done, as you can see, so how it came this uh, model, Granica. So we see, uh, you know, all those competencies such as uh, dignity and respect, for example, taking one letter B here, reflect relationship building, responsibility for others, reinforcing change, R here, for example, under E, ethics, uh, enhancing task knowledge, eliminating barriers for, uh, to performance, for example. Um, Evaluation, evaluating consequences, explaining decisions with respect, and so on, in nutrition uh, relationship. Um, under I, it is integrity, honesty, uh, uh, intelligent risk, test, risk taking, and, and so on. Just to give you one idea, actually, because I will go through those um, um, competencies later on. So this model, a little bit about the uh, model itself and, and respectively the uh, methodology and, and, and so on. So it uh, summarizes actually those competencies that can be uh, actually transferred in, in each field. Uh, so we randomly, as you can see here, selected 25 um, competencies from leadership competencies model uh, of Chitaku 2000. Uh, and uh, 12th, using the research randomizer tool. Uh, bibliometric analysis of the research on Google research, uh, on Google scholars, uh, excuse me, database between 2010 and 2020 were used. So we have, we wanted to see, you know, those uh, uh, research papers that have been published and we know that uh, Google Scholar takes uh, most of them actually. And um, the, the study brought 25 important leadership competencies incorporated in seven important domains, those letters of, uh, you know, Mother Drenica, as you can see, incorporate seven letters, uh, which is um, scientifically robust and can be used in um, uh, leadership training courses and programs in all leadership domains, actually. So now, just to give you an idea, you know, so we, uh, we have seen, then we have uh, tested, actually, uh, how many times, for example, you know, those five domains uh, appear in Google research. Uh, as, as you can see, I don't want now to spend too much time, but you can see, for example, that social responsibility hit so much year then we had over 1 million hits by innovation and leadership one very important um, domain uh, self-management task management justice orientation just to see you know that uh, actually are very very important uh, in the domain of uh, leadership science okay Now uh, let's go to the to those um, uh, competencies, and I will go through them. And uh, at the end, we will have some uh, time for discussion, for questions, and, and so on. So um, for leadership, very important thing: it is dignity and, and, and respect. 
you know, if you if you are a leader and don't have dignity and, and, and no respect, so you can never become a competent leader actually. And unfortunately, we have this. Uh, we see we saw it in many cases by corporates. We saw it uh, in politics many times, and. Uh, you know, now I don't want to mention names, but you can reflect yourself in your own countries. Uh, what kind of leaders do you have in your corporate, uh, your school or institution where you uh, work uh, or what you have experienced so far? So very important thing actually that people have a high dignity and, and respect. Respect for the other human being it's because if you have one leadership position, it doesn't mean, you know, that we have uh, to feel ourselves superior um, in comparing to the others, but it's very important, uh, you know, to treat people with, with dignity, with respect, to treat their and respect their autonomy, their um, integrity, their, um, uh, yeah, so their status and, and, and so on. Uh, the next competency, it is distributing rewards uh, fairly, and we can fail pretty quick, actually. Sometimes, you know, even if you, have, if you uh, give a little bit more attention to one employee more than to the next one, so that might be not uh, fair, you know. So the other one who doesn't get much attention might uh, have the feeling that it's not being treated fairly. So it's really, we have to be very, very sensitive to this regard. Decision making, very important thing. And the leaders, they always have to make decisions. I mean, human beings, all of us, everybody. But for leaders, it's very important, you know, to know to make the right decision in the right time. And uh, leaders need to have a very good advisors, actually. We always say from the science of leadership that uh, good leaders, they have really to have near very smart people, you know, so as advisors, as consultants and so on people who are much smarter than they are, you know. And, and we see, you know, smart leaders, they indeed, you know, in politics or in corporates, they, uh, they are not afraid to get smart uh, people who help them, you know, by advising, coaching, consulting to make uh, decisions because sometimes they are very tough, very difficult uh, decisions which they have to make. Uh, a reflection, one leader should be able to reflect on their own behavior, to reflect uh, uh, on communication, to reflect uh, how he or she can manage emotions uh, in order to uh, make one, uh, one good climb actually in that environment where he or she works. Uh, relationship building, very important thing. We know as a human being, we are very, uh, actually um, very much dependent on each other, you know, so in the social context, uh, I mean, without it, we couldn't, uh, we couldn't even survive. So regarding to some studies, as a human being, we couldn't survive actually, uh, I mean, younger than eight, 10 till, till 12 years old, we couldn't survive alone. So bear in mind, that's very important. Uh, compet competency um, to leadership competency. Responsibility for others, uh, very, very important uh, competency. Uh, and here really we have to bring, it is just as a parentship, you know, so as a mother and father, you have responsibility for your kids. And uh, here as well as a leader, you have uh, responsibility from, for those people who, who you lead. And, um, you know, for your corporate, or if you are a politician, you have responsibility for the whole nation. So bear in mind that. And unfortunately, we see that, that uh, men, uh, few of uh, leaders really take seriously this responsibility, or they are not capable to show that responsibility, and uh, so on. Reinforcing change, we you know, I mean, nowadays in this globalized world, so what today is in, tomorrow it's out. So we have really always to be ready for a change. And uh, of course, our brain doesn't like change. Our brain likes always safety. For the brain, the change is threat. And for us, it's very important, you know, as leaders 
to communicate those uh, changes. It's very, very important that you make it transparent, that uh, you explain to your employees what is the case, and um, you make sure that uh, you explain that those changes that you do, they are meaningful. Because unfortunately, sometimes changes, they can be um, stupid changes. You know, sometimes they can be, you know, uh, ridiculous that nobody, <laughs> nobody uh, needs them. And you should never reinforce change just because of the fashion, you know, that somebody, that it is in, you know, it is fashionable that somebody is doing, I have to do it. It could simply be that it is disaster for you, for example. So check your company, your culture, your nation, whatever, your state, whatever you are leading, and see what, when it needs to change, you know. If the things go good, you know, you don't need to change. But, uh, yeah, so we have a lot of, I mean, leaders have a lot to do with change, and then have to have to help, actually, uh, to reinforce change and to explain, you know, the profit of that change that employees or the nation has. I think it is one very big issue as well. And unfortunately, uh, many companies fail here, many politicians fail because um, it was, it, it has the, to change actually, the paradigm it has to change as well, even in economics, because, uh, you know, in, in 80s, 90s, so it was, you know, by the law, still it is by the law, you can, you can maximize the profit, of course, but maximize profit with ethics and integrity and dignity and not with cheating. You know, we have uh, been witnesses in 2008, it was one global crisis and it was caused by big companies actually, which uh, they were manipulating and uh, in Switzerland, for example, we taxpayers, we had to pay so much money to rescue uh, Union Bank of Switzerland, can you imagine? So that means actually that you can question the, uh, it's a big question mark, what kind of effects of business those people had, you know, what did they, what kind of risks they take? Because uh, they took, because they wanted, of course, to maximize the, the then that is, uh, Okay, that is intention of everybody, but you have always to foresee things, you know, and, uh, so you have to serve the society and uh, otherwise you don't have ethics there. Um, enhance, enhancing task knowledge. So one leader has always to learn actually. So you have to learn what is going on in different kinds of domains, you know, in politics, for example, uh, even if you are not a politician, you know, so corporate leader, you have to know what's going on in, in politics as well. You know, you have to know what's going on in, in psychology, in neuroscience and, and so on, because uh, you have to do actually always with the brains of the, of the people and they are pretty complicated because there is no single brain that is, that is the same. And that makes it pretty difficult, you know, to understand people. Just um, as you mentioned before here, I mean, before it was a change, but here, how can we eliminate barriers to performance, you know? And uh, bear in mind, here it's very important thing, uh, safety. You know, our brain needs actually to be safe. So if you make one environment that people feel safe, they will perform much better. And forget the old fashion, you know, by punishing people or screaming around, it is uh, absolutely counterproductive because um, Creativity can actually get reinforced and enhanced when the brain it is so pretty quiet. If it is a noise, if it is somebody screaming around, so the performance will uh, decrease actually. And of course, that you uh, are able to evaluate consequences of everything you undertake and to foresee and, and, um, uh, to foresee the future, actually, as a leader. And this is not very, very easy, actually. That's why you have to have a lot of knowledge about your own brain, about emotional intelligence. Those are courses that we do teach here and we consult you. So don't uh, hesitate to contact us. Explaining um, decisions with respect. And unfortunately, there are cases which uh, you might have to make one decision. For example, in this pandemic time, many corporates, unfortunately, they uh, had to um, 
sack people because they couldn't pay them. And uh, but it's very important, you know, even those news to bring the views back and to show and see how can you further help uh, those people, for example. Another very important, um, very important competency which you gain in this um, uh, leadership competency model, Granitsa, it is uh, empowerment. As a leader, you have a lot of power actually, just your position gives you a lot of um, power, let's say, and uh, this, you have to be aware of that and try actually as much as possible to empower it. So uh, deliver this power with your employees, you know. What, what does it mean? You know, respecting them, listening to them as well, asking them, you know, they have a lot of uh, innovative ideas many times and uh, feel them that they are uh, respected with integrity, with honesty, and that they matter to you and to your company or to your organization or to your state that you need and so on. Nutrition uh, relationship, it's the next competency, very important, you know, to uh, actually to care after the relationship, uh, because as I mentioned before, we are a, a social kind, so that means we need a good relationship. Uh, because it doesn't bring, you know, much if you try, um, you know, to make unnecessary conflicts, even if somebody, you know, comes and is pretty shouting at you, so try to come down and uh, try to give uh, time, those uh, emotions, you know, that they go through the prefrontal cortex and that you can understand that person and to calm him down because if, you're, if you are calm, even if he or she is shouting, your um, mirror neurons will transform the brain of that person, for example, who is shouting and is nervous. Integrity and honesty, very important um, competency, absolutely one, one of the most important, by the way, it was in the previous model, integrity and honesty among those six countries that we have investigated at that time. So unfortunately, if you see now, um, in many cases, you see uh, leaders who don't have integrity and they are not honest. And people are not stupid, you know, they, they can find out, you know, if he or she doesn't tell the, the truth. And we had even, you know, the presidents of, of uh, great states that they were lying and then so people found out and so people do not believe you and, uh, afterwards. So if you lie and people need this, um, just as we mentioned uh, before, you know, to nutrition those relationship, more oxytocin will get produced in the brain and you will even feel more together. And it is very important, you know, uh, to do a business because people should buy twice, you know, or possibly even longer, you know. So if you cheat, they will not come again. Very important is to ident identify problems, you know, and uh, this is as well one uh, very important competency because uh, you have to identify problems before they grow, you know, because the, the bigger they are, the, the most, more difficult it is to solve them. So if you have the feeling, you know, you have to develop that feeling of identifying problems and try to solve them uh, as uh, quick as possible, actually. And here as well, you know, involving your team, because many heads, many brains can, uh, can do better and more. Intelligent risk taking, very important, um, very important um, uh, competency because in business or in politics or whatever it is, you know, in teaching, you have to take risks. And what we mean by intelligent uh, risk taking, that means, you know, that you see the legal issues everywhere that you don't do something that is uh, uh, not legal. But uh, you see again, you know, that you don't damage your employees or no human being was by taking those risks. And that was a problem. For example, those banks, as I mentioned before, which they made a disaster almost in the whole globe and other companies, they uh, weren't calculating, you know, those risks. They, they weren't taking intelligent risks, but they took too big risks, you know, and uh, so then the um, economy failed. 
or um, we have even in politics, you know, so sometimes they take silly, you know, risks and they bring this disaster themselves. I mean, their own nation and, and the others as well. So be aware of that. Communication with the community, very important thing. You know, as I said, our diversity, our brain, it's, they are very diverse. Uh, if, I mean, this diversity, which it is, you have to communicate and, and uh, explain things to the others, try to find one commitment and then uh, take action. And very important thing is that we learn until we die. Good leaders, they learn till they die, actually. Because what is today in, it could be that tomorrow it is out, actually. And uh, so we need this uh, motivation to learn continuously. Critical thinking, it is an, another very important com competency, which uh, actually, uh, unfortunately, only a few leaders have this affinity, this, this uh, competency developed. So you have really to think out of the box, you know, and uh, you have um, to really to prove that you have a very high emotional intelligence that you can, uh, you know, uh, be able to quiet your, your brain and that you are very self-aware in order to think uh, critically. Because we know that, um, you know, many insights that they come, they come when the brain is in quiet state. Because in quiet state, the brain, the electrical pulses in, in the brain, they are pretty low, you know, and there is creative uh, thinking, there is the creativity, there, there come uh, different kind of insights that are very important for you, for your company, for your nation, if you need one nation. Uh, again, creative problem sol solving, so uh, we can align with this actually. Uh, you need, you know, to uh, bring your your um, brain to calm down, and uh, of course, you know, to consult the others, to get people, you know, professional consultants as well to help you to solve those uh, problems, and of course, in team and people whom you trust. Collaborating, very important thing, of course, you know, so. Uh, in this globalization, it's very important that companies collaborate with each other, human beings collaborate with each other, and together we, we can make marvelous things. Uh, but here as well, you know, it's uh, very important uh, ethics and moral and, uh, you know, dignity and integrity as well, otherwise you will lose the trust. And here as well, sometimes, you know, um, I noticed as well, and everybody noticed that people want to collaborate, but they don't want much to do, you know. So then you see that it is, they expect that you do everything or you do that. And so this is then not fair. The other part, they might say, oh, look, actually this is not fair, you know. So if you collaborate with somebody, so you have to give, actually it doesn't go just to take. So collaboration, it's always giving and taking, giving and taking, giving and taking. And this is building trust. Active listening, very important uh, competency for uh, all leaders worldwide. And unfortunately, leaders in many cases, they don't have very much developed this competency. They don't have time or they are not patient enough to listen and they don't get uh, the whole information actually. And our brain has a lot of biases actually. So it takes just one piece of information and this is a very bad thing because then helps, I mean, him or her to do one, one wrong decision, which actually will have the consequences. So as a leader, you have always to have time to listen, to ask questions, you know, to get feedback if you understood it right or not. And um, this is, has to do as well with open door policy, but really, you know, your employees or people whom you lead, they can come anytime and uh, talk to you and bring their ideas, bring their concerns and so on. Adaptil uh, adaptability, it's uh, another competency, which is uh, very important too, actually, because you have the circumstances to adapt. Uh, let's put it this like this. <laughs> you have to 
have this affinity, um, this capability uh, to be adaptable in different kind of uh, situations. And sometimes it's it's not very easy. So you have to have a sense, you know, to actually smell it, to, to accept it pretty quick, and uh, to adapt. It. Because you have different kind of employees, for example, some of them which are uh, dopamine driven, you know, so they are really always in action around. You have those who are serotonin driven, for example, who are very precisely, and they have difficulties under circumstances to uh, make a choice or make a decision. So you have to adapt, you know, different kind of um, uh, circumstances and uh, people that you have to, to do. And of course, uh, achieving goals uh, very important. This is uh, actually the aim of, of leaders, uh, the one company or, organ or organization or family or um, sport club or, or nation or whatever. And very important thing is that those goals are um, really uh, set properly, you know, and, and, and objectives as well, you know, so that, uh, that they are specific, that they can be measurable, uh, you know, time frame and, and so on, and that you have some um, indicators, you know, that you can measure in the process if you are going in the right direction uh, or not. So this is most briefly actually presentation of this uh, leadership competency model Dranitsa that can be incorporated actually in um, every organization or domain, as you can see, you know, this study um, concluded that 25 randomly chosen leadership competencies are robust, uh, generalized and can be used in any leadership domain. Of course, future research should be designed to replicate extend and uh, confirm the present findings. But in the meanwhile, we have uh, provided a leadership competency model that uh, can be employed to teach and further investigate leadership competencies. So again, this is our uh, number. I Okay, I showed actually before. So now I will uh, stop and uh, I'm open for questions and uh, critics and uh, feedback and, and so on, discussion and so on. Thank you for listening. So feel free to ask questions. Uh, feel free to I have a question. Critics. Please, uh, Amne Derishi from Sweden. Amne is uh, one great politician and uh, activist has been actually in all, more than 88 countries active helping, you know, to develop democracy and uh, uh, gender uh, equality and, and so on. Amit, please. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Chitaku. I have a question. We live in these pandemic times when uh, the, the leaders are facing many obstacles. So what was valid yesterday is not valid today. And I mean, the situation in all of countries, regardless if we're talking about Sweden or Switzerland, wherever in the world, is changing rapidly, very, very quickly. And it's changing often, more often than you think. So being a leader, at least political leader today, is rather challenging, more than in ordinary cases. Uh, according to you, the, the uh, model de Renita of leadership, the competences this, that you describe in great way, which I thank you so much for. I learned a lot, and I'm sure all the others did learn a lot. What do you think, how applicable are they in the, in the long term, having in mind the, the challenges that the leadership are, leaders are facing today, as uh, mentioned, the pandemic, ongoing pandemic? Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um... Uh, Mr. Amidavishi, De very good question. Yeah, absolutely. Actually, all of those um, leadership competencies that I presented can be applicable and, and will help them to overcome those uh, crises which uh, are here, which we face now. And unfortunately, even before pandemic, we had uh, political leaders who weren't much competent. That's why we have a big mess. We had a big mess and a lot of crises, which you know better than me, you know, which uh, many people suffer, and unfortunately, in most of the cases, uh, innocent children and, and, uh, and uh, 
bombing as well. So uh, yeah, actually all 25 army can be uh, can be applicated, you know, there. But of course, you know, they have to be operationalized, you know, that they can uh, they can they can see the indicators, you know, how to implement them, you know, that I can see that I am I am improving. Because you know, if they take it at once, let's say now 25 or just five or, or 10, it is difficult to develop at once because our brain has limits actually. But you know, let's make one self um, assessment, for example, and see, you know, be honest to yourself, but you can make as well some give to somebody as well in your team, in your peering, which you trust them and say, hey, look, Fadil, I can see you here and here you have a gap. And then choose one or two or three which you want to start with and, and work. And you really need, I mean, you need one um, that supports you and, and supervises you to that. Because uh, as I said, in politics as well, sometimes people just uh, got that position, but we didn't teach them or they didn't learn anything about uh, leadership and, and how to lead. This is a very, very big challenge. But I think to your question, yeah, this competency, um, um, model leadership competency model Dremitsa can help you know all leaders to, to get uh, more competent uh, in leadership and uh, the good thing is that it is it, it came from the science you know and now we have to make it applicable actually in, in daily basis but this is possible too thank you Amni I hope that I could answer your question and this is, by the way, I want to take opportunity, Avne, to say that, you know, we, we work together and we are very honored to have you as an um, expert, you know, as an expert in politics at the Academy of Leadership Sciences Switzerland, which we can help a lot of people worldwide actually get a better leader. I mean, more competent leader and then of course better leader because the world needs them. It needs, uh, and uh, our advices and consultants that we offer. So, uh, I mean, nobody would, would will know, you know, that. So we, we keep that confidentiality and with, with a big confidence, actually, we do that. Uh, and uh, yeah, they are more than welcome, actually, as single person or, you know, um, uh, as, a, as, a, as a group, as an uh, organization, whatever. Because our aim is actually exactly those outcomes from the science you know, to put into the practice. And that's what we do with all of our courses with, uh, or, or all of our activities. Any other questions or comments? Okay, can I side, please? say something? Yes, please, uh, Mr. Rebi Zichiri, yeah. welcome. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much for your presentation and uh, explaining in details all these uh, competencies, which uh, from my experience, I think they are all settled in the brain very very well and uh, i can feel it all all of these through based on the experience i mean but uh, from my uh, just, i have some just uh, maybe kind of comments or something like when we discussed about some competencies that have uh, some uh, values like integrity and honesty or uh, dignity ethics or some uh, uh, this might differ based on the country based on the community yeah. uh, maybe we can we can find some universal values but but what, what about uh, communities Do you know this might uh, might be changed and the leaders should be aware of all these uh, all these values where uh, in fact they are operating this is my first uh, you know like kind of comment or open discussions on this and uh, the, the the other point you know uh, we are uh, we are facing all the time this lack of these competencies, especially these who are based on uh, social, ethical, uh, like value-based elements. Uh, since uh, these are just on recent decades, they started being in in uh, integral part of the companies or organization, or at least the people, because they are not taught at us in the school. Mainly we have been taught about the technical skills. Yeah. And now we saw that this is uh, completely wrong, uh, where, we, we found some leaders who are very good in these competencies, but maybe they lack technical skills, but they can do their job very well, even lacking the technical skills. Uh, for that reason, uh, 
uh, the nowadays leader, they should make people aware about uh, learning in schools, teaching children, teaching their children at least, or uh, whatever the power they have, you know, to change the, uh, in, the, in the society in general, to teach this, especially those integrity, set of values, ethical, because this is very, very important nowadays. Absolutely. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Bezichiri. I absolutely agree with you, uh, everything you said. And unfortunately, we have, it seems worldwide, we have missed some pieces, some things, you know, and now we pay a lot. That's why we have this mess. And now we have a lot of um, actually data about what you said, you know, which nowadays we can justify by science and nowadays due to the development of technology, we can see what happened with the single uh, cell actually, you know, uh, we can observe and what happens, how does it connect and whatever and, and under different kind of um, situations and behaviors. And yeah, very, very important. And now really the, the, the smart companies, you know, the, they invest a lot. They invest millions and, and billions now to enhance those uh, competencies and to develop that. But I absolutely agree with you. You should try, you know, and uh, teach this in, in kindergarten and school and uh, university and, and so on, because those are crucial. You know, if you don't have, you know, trust and integrity and, and no ethics, it's going to be a big problem and, and that's why we have such a you can see you know you can witness it now this this um, you know um, pandemic situation management of this pandemic it is a very big disaster worldwide even in switzerland one of the richest countries worldwide and Avni mentioned very good sweden and, and so on are very being very much challenged and the problem is nobody actually sat together and said hey look let's try and make one strategy, but everybody, I'm doing it, you know, I'm doing it, uh, I'm doing that to get some points, whatever, and all, in my opinion, all those, they failed actually. And this is um, maybe exactly what you said, it is a lack of emotional intelligence, lack of uh, integrity and, and respect actually, because at the end of the day, you know, uh, I mean, people suffer, people die from this uh, virus, you know, and you see what happened, you know, in many countries worldwide, you know, they make elections and go without masks and whatever. So uh, this is, shows you, you know, how um, actually egocentric people are and uh, don't care. And this is a very big, very bad thing because, you know, as a leader, we expect you that you care after your nation, after your, uh, uh, after your employees, just as, as they were your kids, you know. So actually, why do you harm your kids, you know? You're not a good father or, or good mother, you know. So it is really very, very needed. Uh, thank you. To, to that extent, maybe just, you know, it's a lot of research being actually done and um, Yale University, you know, the Center of um, Emotional Intelligence is doing a great job. And I have to admit here, Lady Gaga, she really um, is supporting them very good. And I find it great, you know, to invest much more in development of emotional intelligence because many of those competencies have to do with emotional intelligence, because regarding the, the brain brain biology, you know, the most part of our brain actually has to do with emotions. And so if you start, you know, uh, to teach them and, and help them to regulate them, so it will develop more integrity, uh, ethics, and, and so on, which are crucial actually, you know, that we live in peace and uh, have prosperity. Thank you. Any other questions or comments or from your part? Just a few, please. Just a little, a little bit, just uh, half a minute only. You know, I no know problem. that some, some organizations, they have a set of values that they are representing uh, to, the, to their stakeholders. But I have a feeling that in many cases, they're just for the sake of having it. You know, not that they believe so, so much on, on this. And, uh, <laughs> I came across many, many of such uh, such yeah. people through my experience, and uh, and definitely we need strongly to believe in this, and then then having having some values. So this is all what I want to say. Yeah. Sorry about. That. No, you are yeah. absolutely right, and that's very important. This uh, congruency, you know, if you are not congruent with that, what you say and do, nobody will trust you. And I absolutely, I, I witness many of that here in Switzerland and abroad worldwide. We have a very good values there. But 
they don't uh, apply them. And this is a very big discrepancy. And people many times they think, or those who wrote this, they think that people are stupid, but you know, people smell, they see. It's written there, you know, when you go to that enter, it could enter, great thing. But then you see, you know, how he treats, you know, employees there or how he talks or how he communicates. You can see straight away that that's not the case. So rather, you, put, you brought a very good point. Rather don't write it at all if you are not able to uh, apply it, actually. Any other questions or comments or experiences? So we have still a couple of minutes time. So it seems that it's not the case. I thank you for active participating and uh, wishing you all the best and uh, keep safe and remain healthy. <laughs> all the best. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Okay. Goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you very much.